the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. I want to go to the book of Daniel. There I want to go to the first chapter of Daniel. And there I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. I was talking to the worship pastor today. I said, hallelujah. The saints might not mind if I gave them off this for Sunday night. I told them, I said, well, y'all pray hard. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. They might be ready. <laughs> Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. The speaker's like, please. Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability to stay in the king's palace of whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof that they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. Hallelujah. Remain standing because I want to pray with you for just a moment. Everything that has happened to you has been uniquely designed by God to position you into a place of influence. Nothing just happens. Lord, I praise you. But it is a part of God's sovereign plan. Nobody gets into authority without God's allowing it to take place. Whether it's a good leader or a bad leader. And today as I look out at this congregation, I see leaders. I see leaders. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Leadership is influence. The ability to influence somebody or some group to accomplish some assignment or some great task. Leadership is influence. Whether you believe it or not, all that you've been through was to bring you into a place of leadership because we've been called to influence. That's what I want to talk about today. Called to influence. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Let your word have free course in here today. Speak to us in a new and a living way. Challenge us, oh glory. Impart some good gift into us. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. 
as I thought about uh, this being college Sunday, and I know you all were going to be in your college paraphernalia, and perhaps there would be uh, more uh, youth present than that normally is. Of course, you know, the way church is a young church. Amen. The Lord impressed upon my heart to talk about influence. Hallelujah. And so I almost uh, entitled this lesson today, Kingdom Influence. Hallelujah. Uh, and while we are uh, called to influence the kingdom of God, more so we are ambassadors of the kingdom called to influence non-kingdom entities. Yeah. Can I talk for just a little bit today? I, I feel a teaching anointing, so if I don't hoop today, y'all pray for the young man. Uh, the Bible declares that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the way we read it in the English, it looks like, praise the Lord, that the church is on the defensive, meaning that hell is trying to attack, praise the Lord, the church. And so we're defending the church, and, and the gates of hell is not going to prevail against us. But, 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 praise the Lord, really when you read it in the Greek as it is written, it is not the church that is on the defensive, it is the church that is the offensive. Which means it is the church, praise the Lord, going forward, praise the Lord, taking land, taking property, taking territory for the sake of the kingdom. And hell is defenseless. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Does that give you a better perspective of where you are? So, so, so you're really not this underdog trying to, to, to pull up, but you are really set up in a place of authority. The problem is is that you don't realize who you are and what you've been called to do in the kingdom. But I come to tell you that the devil has more confidence in your calling than you have in your identity. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one today. I said the devil has more confidence, hallelujah, in who you've been called to be than your own identity that you have confidence in because he starts off attacking you early. Do you know we wait till our children are near about rusty to start trying to train them in the ways of the Lord? You let them sleep in on Sunday morning. You find everything else to do on Sunday morning. You don't take them to Sunday school if your church have it. You don't put them in children's church. You don't, praise the Lord, try to train them and teach them the word of God at home. Praise the Lord. You allow them to be active in all of these different avenues. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. Praise the Lord. But you push everything up. And then when they get to a certain age, somehow you just think or expect that they're going to develop a spirituality or a spiritual bone. But the Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. And, and so, praise the Lord, they're not going to automatically be spiritual because you're spiritual. They're going to be spiritual because you've trained them to be that way. And children don't look so much at what you say as what you do. You can tell them you ought to pray, and, but if they don't see you having a prayer life, if they see you sit down and devour your food and don't give thanks, if they see you always cussing and fussing and having a praise God, that's what they see. And they're going to mimic what you put in them. Sometimes this is why, and I'm getting ready to deal with the text, but sometimes this is why church is impotent and ineffective to reach the next generation because we are telling them to be something that they are not seeing and they are not being exposed to. Wow. Y'all mad at the pastor because he slipped up. Y'all mad, praise the Lord, at the praise and worship leader because they slipped up. 
And you talk about what's going on and how it, but, but, but the truth of the matter is you give yourself a pass when the truth of the matter is your pastor is not the greatest influence of your family. You are the greatest influence. My brother, the pastor is not the pastor of your house. Glory to God, you are the pastor of your house. And if you are not a prayer, if you are not a reader, if you don't teach your family, you drop the ball. You can change churches five times a year, but if you don't take, praise God, responsibility, mama, and teach and train your child, they will have no spiritual sensibility. Oh, yeah. It's going to be one of them. Y'all just sit tight. Y'all got me up here pretty early today. So I want to talk about three things today. Y'all ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Look at somebody saying, we ready. We ready. All right. I want to talk about the enemy's plot. I want to talk about God's plan. And I want to talk about my purpose. The enemy's plot, uh-huh. God's plan, and my purpose. Can we do that today? Yes. I want you to understand that the devil is not some... A uh, red man with horns and a pitchfork and a long pointed tail running around here just jabbing you. Right. Amen. You know. And I want to tell you that the devil is not just some spooky goblin that comes in the night that just you know and, 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 and he does do different things to spook some of the you know lesser intelligent folk, praise God. But but the truth of the matter, Satan is not some disorganized, praise the Lord, entity that we just blame stuff that happened on the devil. What I'm trying to help you understand is that Satan is an organized entity designed to oppose the forces of God. Okay? When we first see Satan in the scripture, now, when we look in Genesis, we get a man, a picture of him, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Being in the Garden of Eden as a serpent, praise the Lord, fooling mankind in their innocence. Hallelujah. The problem is Genesis 1 and 1 is not the beginning. That is the beginning as taught by Moses. For the Bible calls it, or whenever you get a print Bible, it says the book of Moses called Genesis. So the first five books of the Old Testament is attributed to Moses because he tells the story which is given by Revelation, but it is the beginning of man on earth, mankind, praise the Lord, uh, the Adamic man. Oh, Lord, don't let me get in trouble today. However, there is a beginning before in the beginning. So when you say in the beginning, God created heaven, it's talking about the beginning of the earth as we know it today. But there is something that predates, y'all don't understand, there is something that predates that beginning. In fact, John, pray the Lord, hallelujah, the apostle, the beloved, would go a little bit further and says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So by revelation, John 1 and 1 predates Genesis 1 and 1. Lord, I praise you. And so, what we understand, you'll find this in Ezekiel. I imagine maybe about the 28th chapter. Praise the Lord. That, that, that Satan desires to be like the most high. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. He's not satisfied being uh, the light bearer. He's not satisfied being the one through whom worship goes through. He says, I will ascend to the mountain of God and I will be like the most high. And what he does, he starts a rebellion in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. To which a man, a third of the angelic host are, praise the Lord, fooled by him. They they come under his luciferian authority. I, I want to take a quarter and part right there for just a minute. There is only one leader per movement. One major leader. I'm not talking about secondary leadership, but I'm talking about there is one visionary. And that because there is one vision. When you have more than one vision, you have a division. 
And anything that's trying to circumvent you from following what, praise God, the visionary is saying is a divisionist. And if you are somebody that don't believe in the vision, then, praise God, the place where you're at is not the place for you because you become Luciferian. You, you, you become, praise the Lord, diabolical and trying to dismantle what is going on, praise the Lord. And so this is what happens to Satan. And God says, I'm not going to have it. Get out. Get out. Get out. Out and he kicks him out, praise God. And a third of the angelic host follows him. Now, mind you, Satan is an imitator, he does not have an original thought. I have to do all of this to get to my point where I'm trying to get to. He has no original thought, everything he do, he mimics what he saw in heaven. So there is rank and order in heaven. Therefore, there is rank and order in the hordes of hell. All angels don't have the same rank and order. And they obey one another. They follow one another because order has been set. Isn't it funny how Satan, the satanic, praise the Lord, realm, my God, moves in rank and authority, praise the Lord, but he will cause you to get out of your place and get out of your rank and get out of your authority because he understands that chaos will bring any house down. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Huh? But against principalities, principalities, princi which lets me know that there is an order. And where there is an order, there is a plan. All right? So God has a plan, but Satan has a plot. Now I want to fast forward and I want to move on up into this part of our scripture. Now, God, Lord, I praise you had prophesied, amen, that, that, that Israel or that his people were going to be taken out of their land and sent to Babylon, that, that they're going to be given into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now, what you must understand, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that, 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 that hallelujah, wherever there is a plot, there's always a plan by God. Because the devil always thinks that he is supplanting God and he's always falling right into what God really wants him to do. And, and so, praise the Lord, because God allows the enemy to get in authority, the first thing he does is besiege Jerusalem. He sacks the city. And what he does, praise the Lord, he puts out the eyes of the king, Jehoiakim. Praise the Lord. And he takes a man, the young men. The choice men. He, he removes the wise men from their post and takes them away captive into the land of Babylon. I want to tell you something today. The plot of the enemy. And sisters, I'm not against you today. So pause for just a minute. Don't get in your femininity, praise God, and start fighting me in the spirit, praise God. The first thing I want to tell you is that the plot and the plan of the enemy is to destroy the male. He wants to destroy. He comes for the man because the man has the seed. You got an egg, but he got a seed. I don't care how many chickens are on the yard. If there is no rooster, none of them eggs are going to hatch. In fact, if you look at the word of God, that, that when Eve bit into the fruit, nothing happened. Come on, say amen. But the moment that Adam bit, the Bible said their eyes came open. And so the enemy has not had an original plan from the beginning. Oh, my God. He will use the woman to get to the man. He did it, pray, oh, my God. He did it, praise the Lord, in the book, praise the Lord, of Exodus. When he got ready to kill all the firstborn of Israel, he says, all right, you midwives, they're women. 
When you do the service of a midwife, the first thing I want you to do is if you see a girl, let them live. But if you see a male child, drown them, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you something. When you got a mindset to kill all men and strengthen the hand of women while killing the man, it, it is not an original idea. It is a plan of the enemy. Praise God. Because I don't care how many sisters you got going around here. If you don't have male influence in anywhere, it's not going to work the way God has designed it to work. Oh, I'm getting in deep waters right now. And so the first thing that Nebuchadnezzar does is he tries to affect, hallelujah, the young men and turn them into eunuchs. He takes away their ability to reproduce. If you ever want to weaken a people, take away their ability to reproduce. They're quiet. This is why, oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. This is why the homosexual agenda, the, the LGBTQ, XYZ, is so great, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you know, praise the Lord, that the same sex cannot reproduce. They cannot reproduce. It is not natural. I don't care who told you. You think it's about love. It's not about love. It's about reproduction. Because you don't have to love somebody to reproduce with them. Praise the Lord. But the enemy will get in your culture and get in your people and try to shut you down. And then use you to promote your own genocide. And I know this is not politically correct, but I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm trying to tell you what the word of God is saying and how the devil is messing you over. And so they make our men more feminine, praise the Lord, and make our women more masculine and hard. And so the woman is trying to carry on so many, praise the Lord, of the task that she was not anointed. Because you can don't mean you should. Just because you can go make the bacon, cook the bacon, serve the bacon, don't mean that you should all of the time. Sometimes certain situations demand that you have to step in and do those things. Hallelujah. But it should be for a short while until the man who is anointed to do it step in their place and become the man. Y'all can be quiet all you want, but I see a spirit. I'm hunting it and I'm going to get it. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pluck it up by the root. Glory to God. We're not going to be no weak church. We're not going to be a church without power and without influence. We're not going to be no church where all of our marriages are ending up in divorce. The devil is a liar. Hey. So, the plan of the enemy he goes after our young people. Why does he go after the youth? Because the youth is our posterity. The youth is our future. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, while I'm young, there's a whole lot that I can do. There's a whole lot that I can, you know, go after in my strength and build. But then after I get to a place in my life, I no longer have the strength to build. The only thing I'm really good for then is to teach and to train the next generation. Praise the Lord. Because you're the one that's going to take over, praise the Lord, and take this thing to the next level. Are you understanding? And so the enemy sees that. And so he plans long before you ever get grown, planting seeds in you that will self-destruct. He, Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. He plans stuff in your life. That's why praise the Lord, when, when your auntie told you you was ugly, when your auntie told you, praise God, you was fast. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. They thought that they were, you know, scolding you and trying to correct you, but what they were doing, they were planting seeds in your mind making you feel like that I must be less than. Why am I doing that? Because I know know that if I can put some insecurity in you then when you get older that insecurity is going to hinder you from getting into your place of influence and there are people in your family there are people in your life that you are good until you get 
next to them. You are good till you come into contact. And when you get around them, you start getting fidgety. And you start feeling like that little girl that was scared again. And they take you back to that place. Why is it? Because they are trying to keep you from getting into your place of influence. And it was a plan. What they teach you in school is planned. The curriculum is planned. And some of us as parents, we're so busy, we don't read to our children. We're so busy, we don't set the culture in our house. We just give our children a tablet. We just give them a phone. And as long as they're not bothering us because we're busy, hallelujah, we're good. But I'm telling you, we are neglecting to educate our children about the truth. Because the man is going to always tell his story. And you grow up believing a lie about yourself. Believing that you are inferior. Believing that you don't have a right to rule. And that you don't have a right to reign. And it can you help propagate the lie because you did not counter what the devil said you did not counter what they you don't even look at their homework you don't even know what the guided course of study is whatever and then they send a letter home talking about your child praise the lord can't learn or your child is slow or, or your child is this and so then you go to the doctor and let the doctor dope them up on a whole lot of stuff y'all don't understand affecting their mind and affecting their mentality no baby hallelujah we come from a genius of people hallelujah that are smart and you just got to find another way to teach me you got to find another system to deal with who I am glory to God I refuse to dumb down my isness because you are intimidated by my greatness I know who I am and I know whose I am my God I feel some righteous indignation creeping up and I'm tired of the devil lying. And you believe it. Hook, line, and sinker. This world system is not designed for the saints to go forward. Babylon, can I, can I really teach? I might have to turn this into a series. I don't know. And I know Easter coming, so we got to talk about the blood too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to do so. Babylon, Babel, is the Hebrew word confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. In those Chaldean language, they call it the gate of God. So Babylon, praise the Lord, is one of the first fountainheads, aside from Egypt, is one of the first fountainheads, praise the Lord, that dispenses knowledge and education and understanding to the people. Y'all don't understand. The Bible calls Babylon the land of Shinar. Uh, praise the Lord, you find that there was a man by the name of Nimrod. He, he was a mighty hunter before God. Before God does not mean that God approved of it. It just means that under the sun he was a mighty hunter. What does that really mean? That means he was a leader. Praise God. He was a leader. Many people believe that Nimrod, praise the Lord, the counterpart or, or the one, praise the Lord, uh, that we call Gilgamesh. Y'all ever read about Gilgamesh? That, that, that Nimrod is actually Gilgamesh, praise the Lord. So in the opposite writings, it talks about this mighty hunter before God. And in the land of Shinar, they, after they come out of the flood, and why did they go through the flood? Because God punished the world because they forgot about God. And what they said to his mother, they said, let us make a name for ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And let us build a tower whose top reaches to heaven so that we'll never be scattered again. And so they become one. And so, praise the Lord, hallelujah, uh, the, the beginning of Babylon shows, amen, the beginning of humanity rebelling against the will of God. God wants you to do it his way or no way. And you, I don't care how educated you are, I don't care how much money you have, God has a way of bringing your junk down to nothing. He will let you think that you are moving forward. He will let you think that you are having it 
it your way. And then he will come in and scatter what you're trying to do. And so the Bible says that they begin to build a tower to go to heaven. And God. God speaks, hallelujah, takes counsel with himself and says, behold, man is one. Man is one. And nothing that they're going to do is going to be restrained from them. So the only way I'm going to be able to hinder this, I'm going to have to confuse their languages. And so Shinar, praise the Lord, gets turned into Babel or Babylon, which is confusion. Praise God. False religion, the cradle of false religion starts in Babylon. The miseducation of demons, who we would call deities, it starts in Babylon. And so whenever you see Babylon in the scripture, are y'all with me today? Come on, come on, sit with me today. Hallelujah. I know, I know y'all want me to hum, but I want to teach you something today. I want to teach you something today so that when you come out of here, you'll be armed with some knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? Honey, when you see Babylon in the scripture, Babylon never has a good name. Babylon in the New Testament is called the great harlot, the mother of harlots. It is the mother of false religion, meaning that all of this false religion, this false teaching comes out of the spirit of Babylon. Babylon. Not only is it religious teaching, but it is worldly teaching. It is the arts. It is all of the things that make us feel like we are cultured. That make us feel like we are somebody. It is the spirit of Babylon. And I come to tell you that Babylon has come into the church. Babylon has come into the Christian religion and the Christian faith. And we do a whole lot of Babylonian stuff that we don't really understand because no Nobody has knowledge. The watchmen are blind. They are greedy, dumb dogs. All they want to do is get your money, but they don't want to ever teach you no knowledge. And aren't you tired of being in churches where all you do is shout, but you never learn anything? Aren't you tired of going to churches that all the preachers do is modulate and know how to hum up and down the scale, but it don't preach nothing? we are holding on to our traditions we're losing our children because the system of Babylon is working it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. Yes, it is, yes, it is. I mean, you get, how do you, you, you get your child and have brought them to church, and then all of a sudden now they start questioning whether Jesus was ever real or not. They start, how do, they start questioning whether the blood, now, now they was on the altar feeling the power of the Holy Ghost, but now they're questioning, why is that? Because Babylon is taking over. Hear the word of the Lord. It's a fountain here. It affects everything. Can I, can, I, can I teach this? Watch this. One of the first things that Babylon does, that the spirit of Babylon does, is it tries to change your identity. Oh, y'all don't believe that, do you? The Bible says in Daniel 1 and 7, First of all, they already had names, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And all of these names are derivatives of God's name, what God will do. Their parents named them something that was connected to God. But the moment, and, 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 and I'm going to show you how well it worked. It works so well that when we talk about the three Hebrew children, we never mention what their real given names are. It's always Shadrach, Meshach, and a billy goat or a bad Negro or whatever you want to call them. It's always something that Babylon gave them. But, but the real name was Mishael, Azariah, and Hananiah. But do you see how miseducation will make you forget your name and make you forget who you are, make you forget where you come from? The first Thing that demon want to do is make you forget your identity in God. Make you forget. They want to call you something that you are not. They want to call you, hallelujah, retarded. You're not retarded. They want to call you bipolar. You are not bipolar. They want to call you, glory to God, power. 
poverty and broke and minority. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the Oh, y'all talking about that's just words. That just term. No, 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 no. They are terminologies that are shaping your mind. The world was made by words, logos, thoughts, and ideals. Nothing is more dangerous than an idea that is coming to its time. And you just throw around words empty. Shaping your mind. Changing your identity. I pray for my children when they go to college because now you're meeting the meeting of the minds. And they're going to challenge everything that was. That's why I tried not to teach y'all no lies and fairy tales. That's why, that's why I didn't tell them, I didn't, growing up, I didn't teach them about Santa. We, we learned about St. Nicholas and who he really was, praise the Lord. And, and so we can understand that. So when we say Santa and all that, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not crazy. Praise the Lord. I know children got to have their little childhood. But, but, but in the beginning, the way I dealt with my children, I didn't tell them a whole lot of fairy tales because I'm going to tell you what happens. With everything you tell them and stuff that you uh, propagate and pass on to them that Bishop and them said, how that there is no Bible for it. When they get to the college campus or when they get to the meeting of the mind, those that are wise are going to challenge that. And they're going to go back and look in the Bible and say, well, that's not in there. And then they'll start saying, well, what else? did they not tell me and what else did they and, and now you they come back home fighting what you were, you know that you have the Holy Ghost but you did not deal with their mind I, I, I want your spirit saved but I want your mind sanctified let me say that again I want your spirit saved but I want your mind sanctified Hallelujah, because it's your mind the Bible said it's with my mind that I serve God you need to get your mind wrapped around it That's why we need to teach our children. We need to teach our children more than shouting. It look cute, but they need to get somewhere and sit down and learn the word of God. Learn it on their level. Be make children grown before their time. Your grown self. Sit down and learn something. Because your shout ain't going to scare the devil. Your run ain't going to scare the devil. The word have I hid in my heart. Are y'all understanding what I'm trying to tell you? That I know I'm not going to finish this. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you understand that Babylon is coming after your children. They're coming after your children. They're, they're, they're coming after them. I'm, I'm talking about even the little babies, the little songs, the little programs that they give the babies. You know, mothers put, amen, uh, 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 music to their belly so that the baby can listen and stuff. I'm telling you, what, what kind of music are you putting? What kind of books are you reading? What, what, what is the culture of your home? Because by the time, by the time they get these ages, they pretty much form what their opinion and their belief structure is going to be. And it takes a mighty move of God to break that down. But the truth of the matter is you losing time by letting Barney raise your children. You letting a, 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 a purple dinosaur teach your child when you can teach your child. I love you, you love me. So, so, so they're teaching you that, that Barney loves you better than your parents love you. Because Barney said he loved you, but do you ever tell your child you love him? Or are you always busy trying to bring in the bacon? And you know, hey! You know why people join organizations and gangs? Because they're looking for acceptance and they're looking for somebody to give them an identity. They're looking for somebody to show them love. And I'm sorry to tell you, some of these gangs in the streets got more love than what we have in the church. So we're trying to tell them you need to come over here, but they see you talking about reverend. They see the mothers talking about each other. And you want me to believe that your God, your God can't even stop you from gossiping. So you think he's that powerful? Oh, 
Oh, I didn't come to play no games today. I, I had you. Hallelujah. I come to tell it like it is. Your identity. You were not gay. Hear what I'm telling you? But if you get around enough people that will give you, get mad if you want to, I'm going to break that spirit. You don't, you, and you don't break the spirit by speaking in tongues over it. First of all, you must show that spirit that you love because it is a spirit that's born out of rejection. It's been rejected. It's been rejected. And so that rejecting forms offense and offense forms barriers. And so every time you try to go at it and fight it, it's going to fight back. But all it was was that you were rejected in some way, shape, or form. Hallelujah. And some predator shows you love, shows you acceptance. And you get some screwed up relationship. And now you sitting there thinking, well. Y'all, 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 now I love the color purple. But y'all know that part? Have you ever read the book? Not just the movie, read the book. This girl has been raped by her stepfather. Hear what I'm telling you? Given to a man twice her age, all he wants is a piece of meat. He don't want no wife, so there's no love in her home. There's no love when she gets married, and she's raped. That's all, all, that's all the man is doing. He's, he's climbing on top of her, doing his business, and raping her. She is scarred because there is no love. And the first person that shows her that she is seen, that she is valuable, hallelujah, begins to molest her body. So if the price of being seen, and if the price of being loved, and if the price of feeling like I belong means that all I got to do is give up my body or, or, or contort myself, then I'm going to do that. And you talking about me and telling me that I look funny or that I walk effeminate or that I, praise God, walk massive. But you never took me and loved on me. You never told me who I was. You never, all you did, praise God, was my God fight me for what I look like. But you never loved me for who I was. That's what Babylon does. Babylon capitalizes on the broken. Hallelujah. And tells them who they are. So Babylon becomes your mama. Babylon becomes your daddy. Are y'all hearing me today? Because you don't take it seriously. You think church is about coming here being fabulous and great. And being grand. Or getting the microphone. You, and then when I give you the microphone, you can't say nothing when I give it to you. Because you ain't got no word. You just want to be seen. Well, baby, I see you. You are loved. You are valuable. Our mothers had to go into the house of our slave masters and ascribe value to their children. And they gave so much to their children that by the time they got home, they had nothing left to give to their children. And so our women grew up thinking that they were mammies and bees and hoes and, and all kinds of stuff. Because, oh, y'all don't understand. Because the generation told them who they were. And you didn't. So we give rise to a Dr. Umar, who at his core is a misogynist. He don't, he don't, he don't, he don't believe in the equality of a woman with a man. 
And, and because we had certain false prophets rise up in the church, we believe and teach that Jesus was a misogynist. Because your bishop was a misogynist don't mean Jesus was a misogynist. Jesus elevated the role of women. Jesus gave women back. Everywhere Jesus went, he always lifted up the status of the woman. Y'all don't like my talk. It's only you with your little Luciferian myopic view of things that you keep putting women down, making them think that they're nothing. When God created them on the same day that he created you. He cre In fact, y'all were created at the same time. You were created at the same time. The Bible says in the beginning God created male and female. Created he them at the same time. And gave them both dominion. He gave the woman dominion as well as the man. Y'all don't like my talk. The Bible says he formed Adam first. But they were both created at the same time. Formed and created is two different things. If you understand that you are a spirit before you get in a body, then that means I was created, I was an idea, I was a thought in the mind of God long before. I might be limited in my body, but I ain't limited in my mind. Hallelujah. My, see, that's what a stroke do. A stroke takes the body, takes the body. But in my mind, I am glory to God of genius. In my mind, I know who I am. That's why you better keep your mind straight. How I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is straight. I mean, you better keep your mind. Your body might go to pot. You might not be able to walk. You might not be able to talk. But if you keep your mind. He'll change you by the renewing of your mind. The reason why you can't because you think you can't. But you need to change your mind. All repentance is is changing your mind. deals with their identity. Yeah. Yeah. Who told you? Oh, really? Jesus, Garden of Eden, he, he comes walking in the cool of the Eve, and Adam is hiding, and, 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 and the Lord says, Adam, where are you? Lord, I was hiding because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? Until you knew that you were naked, it didn't even bother you. Until you knew that you were naked, you could do anything. Until you knew, good God Almighty, that you were disadvantaged, you could conquer the world. But somebody gave you some extra knowledge that was not their right to give to you and gave you a limitation and an impediment. I can't do that today. Can't do that. Who are you? Because Babylon is telling you who you are. They're dealing with your mind. And the systems. It's just, it, it's nothing new. It's just recycled same stuff. They repackage it so it looks new. But it's not really new. It's the same thing. Man trying to be something that man is not. Or trying to live life apart from God. That's all it is. So be careful what you do to feed your pride and your ego. But does nothing for your spirit. You know why people don't go to God? Because God humbles you. You want to go to the universe. Because the universe don't humble you. All, all the universe is, 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 is force. May the forces be with you. Y'all quiet? 
them, them crystals don't humble you. Sage don't humble you. Yeah, I'm coming for you. Mm hmm Yo. It don't humble you. It makes you proud. I'm proud because I'm a mason. I'm proud because I'm a shriner. I'm proud because I'm a widow lodge. So Y'all don't like my talk of it. I'm proud because I'm whatever you are. Praise the Lord. That gives you that. I'm in a brotherhood. I'm in, a, I'm in the greatest brotherhood under the sound of the. I belong to the church of the living God. The pillar ground and truth. I don't need to belong to nothing else. That's not my identity. I refuse to kneel at some fake altar and give up my identity to a false god. It's an indoctrination. And you, how I, you know how I know it ain't right? Because if you ever disavow it, they treat you like dirt. Almost like a gang. If you leave a gang, they'll, if, if they let you live... If they let you live, they'll beat you within an inch of your life. And we got church folks promoting that junk. I know y'all don't like me, but I'm going to tell the truth. Some of the reason why your children can't get straight is the stuff that you have associated and attached yourself. And if I am a real man of God, I can't let you get by with that. The love that I have for you tells me to tell you, come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Your secret meetings and your secret handshakes. Come out. Brandon yourself. Come out. She caught on my salty eye. Come out. If God's word don't challenge you, that means God don't love you. But because he loves you, he challenges you. Come out, come out, come out. This one, they want all the light-skinned women. This one, they get all the dark-skinned women. Where did that come from? Slave master mentality. But yet you're supposed to be the divine nine. You supposed y'all don't like my talk up, but you all you're doing is propagating the same thing that old master did. Separate you, 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 you the outside slave, you the house negro. House negro, field negroes, all negroes. you humble yourself make you offended and mad but God wants you to humble yourself so that he can exalt you in due time humble yourself they, they want to tell you about how good you are and all, but God said you are a sinner you are a wretch undone and you need to repent so that I can turn you into and if you obey God and come to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I surrender my life. You make me a man. You make me a woman. You make me glory to God. God will come in. He'll take you. He'll give you power and give you influence. And you'll change the world. You don't need 15 minutes of fame. God said, my God in the morning. Paul, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, he was in some of the greatest. He followed at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a very great intellectual. Hallelujah. But when he got ready to come, he said, I count it all but dumb for the knowledge of the excellency of Christ. And what ended up happening, praise God, we are still talking about Paul's letters. We're still talking about his epistles. He have built the church. Y'all don't understand what I mean. Because, glory to God, he let God make him a great influencer. Don't let the world tell you who you are. Let God tell you who you are. I got to quit now. My time is... Hey! You know what happened? Can I tell you something else about Babylon? Babylon influences the music. 
That's the fountainhead. Do you know that music bypass your cognitive reasoning? It can bypass, it can go, it can go past the barriers in your mind and go right to your soul. Music is so powerful. They say, praise the Lord, that if you're in pain, if you learn how to listen to music, it will cause you to even forget about the pain. Music is so powerful, it will dredge up a memory that you forgot years ago, and you'll hear that song, and something, praise God, but I remember what I was and what I was doing when I heard that. You could have been a little bit, but music has that kind of power. Are you understanding what I'm talking? Now, anytime something has that kind of power, man did not create it. Satan did not create it. God created that. But everything that God creates, Satan perverts it to use it for his own ability. Why? Why? Because he wants to be worshipped. Satan wants to be worshipped. When y'all go to them concerts, what did they tell y'all to do? I'm talking about worldly concerts. Y'all, don't act like y'all ain't been there. J. Cole and all the rest of them. Don't act, like, don't act like y'all ain't been there. They said, do what? Throw your hands up. Wave it in the air. When you come to church, what they tell you to do? It's all worship. It's all, and listen, you were created to worship. Mankind was created to be a worshiper. You gonna worship something. You gonna wor- I know I don't believe in God. Well then you gonna worship intellect. You will make an, an all an idol is is something that people worship that is not God. That's all. If you don't believe in the power of the church, then you'll go to witchcraft. Wicca. We're going back to our ancient ancestors. They took that away from us when we come. That's how they get you. They get you with with, with black pride. But they have to attack Jesus. So they make Jesus white. So if you see him as white, well, he don't represent me. So so now they done knocked down your defenses about Jesus. And now you believe in some mystic ancestor that you don't even know nothing about. about Channeling spirits and demons. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Uh Now your emotions are all crazy. You got to smoke weed to get in that place. You do know, you do know, you do know that marijuana is a spiritual entity, right? You do know when you smoke marijuana, it, it takes you into other gateways. You do know that, right? You do. It's not just killing your brain cells. No, it's causing your spirit to go into different dimensions. And you're going into dimensions that God did not tell you to go in. And when you come out of them dimensions, you have a demon attached to you. And you wonder why every child you have, you have a miscarriage. You wonder why every time you get into a relationship, it fails. There's a spirit on you. And you open up the door when you started dabbling. Y'all don't like my talk. Just ask our Native American brothers when they smoked that peace pipe. Hallelujah. There was something in that peace pipe that caused peace. It's natural. It's of the earth. It sure is. It sure is, it's up there. And don't you know the things that are seen are made of the things that are not seen? So for every natural component, there is a spiritual component. For everything you see physically, there is a spiritual representation of it in the heavenlies. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You, my. I'm just trying to help y'all today. So you're smoking that stuff while you're listening to certain kinds of music. What are you doing? You're worshiping. You ain't worship. Y'all quiet. I believe the young folk want me to tell truth. Y'all don't want me to play what y'all do. 
I ain't dumping on you. I'm not, I'm not beating you over the head, okay? I'm just trying to inform you that the enemy is trying to destroy your life and you're helping them, but you're helping them because you're ignorant of where you at. But I'm going to inform you so that by the time you leave here today, you have no excuse to keep doing what you're doing. Come out, come out, come out, come out! Come out of Babylon! out. God has greater for you. Scott said last night that the enemy, he can't destroy your destiny, but he can delay you. Stop letting the enemy delay you! Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. That's what I'm telling you. Come out, come out, come out. Babylon got your mind, but come out. Babylon got your attitude, but come out. Hallelujah. Babylon got your emotions, but come out! The Bible says, oh God, the Bible says this. Y'all remember when Daniel prayed three times a day? Y'all remember that Bible story? And folk wanted power. And because Daniel had a life that was right with God, God gave him favor. And those people were Praise the Lord, jealous of his power, so they wanted power. So they created a rule and says, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we want to uh, set a rule that for the next 30 days that nobody can worship or ask any petition of any other God except for you. And the first thing they did was build an image you know what I'm telling you? The first thing they did was build an image. And they said, okay, it's time for worship. He said, now, at what time you hear the music playing? At what time you start hearing all the, the coordinate, the sack butt, and the flute, and the praise the Lord, Chalamar, and all of these different kinds of musical equipment, then you begin to bow down and worship. Huh? And that's what happened. They bowed down and worship because they were trying. Music affects your ability to worship. I'm sorry, praise and worship leaders. You're not going to be able to effectively take us into the presence of God if all you pumping all week long is Mary J. Blige, and I know that's all old school, but even some of the new stuff that you got, how they, you, you listen, I, you, I, 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 can, can, oh, can I teach y'all for just a moment? When God has called you to serve in his house, you are sanctified. Set apart. Sanctified doesn't mean you better. Sanctified doesn't mean you greater. Sanctified just means that this is for this and this is for that. You cannot be a musician in the club, playing gigs in the club, and then coming in the church making God people shout. That is confusion. Now this is holiness. I'm teaching y'all holiness today. And the reason why we got confused church people and confused musicians is because they're trying to live two lives. You can't come in God's house high on weed, pray the Lord, glory to God, trying to make us shout. And you ain't even sanctified yet. How are you trying to make me worship a God that you have not even tapped into yet? And because the church won't musicians, we hire folk to do that stuff. We hire and then wonder why there's a strange spirit in our church. Because we have compromise. And then mama go home and tell Jimmy, Jimmy, you don't need to smoke weed. Jimmy, you don't need, you don't need to be sleeping around. Well, the musician, he smoked weed. Hallelujah. The musician, he hoeing around and got five different church. And he in the church. How you going to tell me something? I hope I ain't making y'all mad. But if you is mad, good enough for you. Because if this clear out of church, that means you never had a right heart toward God anyway. But what I'm teaching you today is the more I'm talking, the more it's making you want to get close to God. It's making you see yourself as, you know what, I'm jacked up right now. And I want to go back with the Lord when he, he's coming back. He's coming back just as soon. Hallelujah. Any day now, you're going to look up and God's going to crack the sky. But you can't go if you ain't got his spirit. I 
want to be just like him. I want to be just like him. I want to be just like him when he come. Jesus ain't got no roach in his hand. Say yes, Lord. Jesus ain't in the hotel getting some motel. Say yeah. Y'all quiet in here. But I'm telling you what, he's coming back. He's coming back. We used to preach that Jesus is coming back. We used to tell the folk, get ready, get ready. Set your house in order soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. What you going to do when the sun refuses to shine? What you going to do when the moon drift away in blood? What you going to do when the powers of the earth are shaking? What you going to do? You ain't got time. You ain't got time. Lil, you, you ain't got time. You ain't got time. You ain't got time. Whew. I arrest the demon right now in the name of Jesus. You ain't got time. I tell about shit. You ain't got time. Let me tell you, when Jesus comes, you ain't got time to get right. Hallelujah, you ain't got time, you ain't got time, you ain't got time to go apologize to the folk that you done showed your behind to. You ain't got time, you ain't got time to get things straight. Hallelujah, but wow, you have a chance right now. Now is the time to get it straight. Now is the time to say, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender my will. I surrender my way to you. Coming out of Babylon. Let me stop. Let me stop. Because you call, you call to have influence. You call, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. You call to have influence. The reason why God sent you to A and T, because He wants you to have influence. Y'all don't like my talk. The the, the reason why he sent you to Campbell, because he wants you to have influence. I told Marcus, I said, when you get to A&T, you know, it's known as a party campus. Don't go lose yourself in trying to be like everybody else. He told me he went to a party for the first time. Guess he said he was going to be grown. I didn't tell it because he told it. And And the first party he went to, they started shooting. He said he, he said he was running, trying to get out. He said his friends was laughing. They were laughing about to die. And he stared because he know he ain't got no business in there. And that's where the devil going to catch you at, where you ain't got no business. You know better. You know better. to be like everybody else. You ain't like everybody else. I don't care how hard you try to fit in. God got a mark on you. God got his thumbprint on you. God got his hand on you. And you can't be like everybody else. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the sanctification. I thank him for the difference. I thank him for the favor that's on my life. I thank him for the parameters, hallelujah, that he placed on me. I thank him for telling me I can't do this. When I really want, I didn't have no sense. I was going to die. But God said no. But you call to be an influence. I got to finish this later. You call. Do you think that God sent you to your school or sent you to your job just to make money? No. He sent you to the fountainhead, hallelujah, so you can influence what comes out of the fountain. I don't know if you're still trying to get your own shot, hallelujah, and do your hair. But, but see, the reason why he's calling you to be a hat, you know people trust their hairdresser. 
baby, if I'm going to let you slap something on top of my head and me go walk outside, then, then I really have to trust that you know what. So what that means is you automatically become a counselor. You automatically become, glory to God, an advisor. And what better to be a Holy Ghost filled hairstylist? And you can wear your blonde hair, and you can look good. You ain't got because we saved on me, we look thrown away. Baby, do yourself up and look good. Cause the world ain't gonna accept you if you look thrown away. Our God. But just make sure you got the Holy Ghost. So why you why you why you frowning and laying it to the side? You say, in the name. They don't know what you're doing in the name of Jesus. They don't understand that the reason why this, they can't go to sleep at night, there's demons trying to take over them. But while you're doing that, you're casting out the devil. <laughs> My God, you're speaking assignments, hallelujah, against their life, and you're cutting it out because God has made you, praise God, to be an influencer. Y'all don't understand. If you go to the classroom and be a teacher, maybe you can't take the Bible and teach. Amen, Matthew, praise the Lord. But I tell you what, you can, my God, teach the principles wherever you go and you can influence them <laughs> hallelujah when they come in they'll be under the auspices of the Holy Ghost <laughs> the Holy Ghost reigns in this classroom <laughs> the Holy Ghost rules in this place <laughs> y'all don't understand <laughs> and they'll be looking at you talking about, I don't know why <laughs> I can't control them kids <laughs> but when they get in your class <laughs> they act right <laughs> how you able to make them that you don't understand <laughs> I got a root <laughs> but I didn't go nowhere to burn no root <laughs> got the root and the offspring of Jesse. Somebody say, yeah, I got Jesus on the inside. And when I leave and matriculate out of the call of a and I'm not going to leave Jesus in a and Hallelujah. But when I go, my God, to the upper echelons of society, I'm taking my God with me. If I become my God an entertainer, I'm taking my God with me. If I come on Wall Street, I'm taking Jesus with me on Wall Street. If I get into politics, I'm taking Jesus with me in the politics. If I become a traveler of the world, I'm taking Jesus wherever I go. Wherever I go, my God is going with me. Because if I take Jesus to them, Jesus will bring them to me. Say yeah, say yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. God has called you to be an influencer. God has called you to be God has called you to be life. God has called you to be yeast. You are an influencer. I say you go touch three people and tell them I'm called to be an influencer. Get up, go find. It. Go find. It. I'm called. I'm called. To be an influencer. Go touch him and say, I'm called. I'm called to be an influencer. I'm called, you understand. I am somebody. I've been touched by the master. I'm going to influence my generation. I'm going to influence my nation. I'm going to influence this system. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say that your kingdom must come down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. I'm going to tear your kingdom down. They used to say, I'm going to walk until I tear your kingdom down. I'm going to pray until I tear your kingdom down. And that sounds good, but I'm going to infiltrate your system. And I'm going to sabotage them from the inside until your kingdom come down. I'm going to sprinkle a little salt over here. I'm gonna bring a little salt over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tear your. Whether you're young, whether you're old, you're still an influencer. 
You can still touch the next generation. You can influence your community. You can influence your neighborhood. Come on, somebody. You can tear down the kingdom of darkness. That's what I really come to tell y'all today. I come to tell you we didn't come to do church as usual. I come to tell you we didn't come just so we could shout. I'm going to shout while I'm here. But I come to get empowered. Because when I leave this building, when I go back to my job, when I go back to my community, when I go back to my school, when I go back to my district, I'm not going back to compromise. But I'm going to take over. I didn't come to compromise. I came to take over. I didn't come to compromise. I came to take over. I got the salt in the bag. I'm going to seize it wherever I go. I'm going to prevent corruption. Wherever I go. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. You say it's little. But Jesus said you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill. That's not be hidden. I got a light. You got a light. Let your light so shine. Pay your light bill. Where about boy? Pay your light bill. Anything in the way that's trying to keep your light from shining. Get it out of the way. Pay your light bill. My God, change the light bulb. Pay your light bill. Walk right. Talk right, love right, love now, leave foolishness alone, say yeah, say yeah, I know who I am, I know who I am, I got my mind back, I got my identity back, say yeah, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world, say yeah, I am an influencer. Come on, give him about 10 seconds of praise. I said, give him praise. I said, give him praise. Oh! 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 oh. I gotta leave you. I gotta let you go today. But I hope I've left a seed in I hope I've planted something in I hope I've torn down the wall of your insecurity. I come to tell you that you are more than a conqueror. I come to tell you that you are anointed. You are appointed. You are sanctified. You are set aside. But such a time as this, say yeah. I know you've been through a rough season. I know you've been through a rough patch. And the devil tried to beat your joy out of you. The devil tried to beat your purpose out of you. To delay you from getting where you need to be. But the devil is a liar. Get your purpose back. Get your joy back. Get your fight back. Get your peace of mind back. Get your purpose back. Say yes! Yes! I'm getting it all back. I'm getting it all back. I'm getting it all back. You came for me. And I'm getting it all back. You came to kill. You came to steal. You came to destroy. But I'm getting it all back. You thought I was done. You thought I was dead. You left me 
the day and you forgot to check my book. Destroy this body and in three days I'll rise again because he got up. I'm up to this because he didn't lay there. I got resurrection power in my life. You thought you buried me, but you didn't bury me. You just planted me. Except the seed fall into the ground and die. It abided alone. All I did was transform. All I did was metamorphosize. Try to renew it up my mind. And now I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. Say yeah!